Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over some of the motorcycle gear that I choose to ride with. Whether I'm riding my BMW uh, R1250 GSA behind me or my 2018 Honda Goldwing. I'm a big fan of AGAT, all gear, all the time. And what I'm gonna do in this video is just show you and talk about some of the motorcycle gear that I choose to ride with. So stick around and I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks. Okay, let's start and take a look at the riding gloves that I uh, that I choose to wear. Um, you can see here I have uh, four sets of riding gloves, and I have um, on the left hand side I have a uh, I call it a, a glove liner. Basically, it's like a jogging glove, and uh, I'll go through uh, and we'll look at each one of these, and I'll explain where you know when I use these gloves and um, when I'm riding. Okay, so. Let's start here at the left-hand side, right? So you can, this is basically an Under Armour uh, jogging glove, okay? And what I use this for is when I'm riding in the fall or winter type weather, um, what I'll do is I'll put this on my hands first, um, and this will create a nice warm liner for my hands. Um, and even though I have heated grips on my motorcycles, Sometimes I choose not to use the heated grips and uh, I'll just throw this, this liner on first. And then what I would do is, um, once this is on, then I would uh, put one of these gloves here, right over them, okay? So that's, that's really the purpose of this. This is just a, like a, a liner for colder riding weather, okay? So that's the first thing to point out. Now, the actual first riding glove here on the table that um, you know we're going to talk about here on the left is this glove here. It's made by Joe Rocket. That's the manufacturer, and Joe Rocket makes some pretty great riding gear. I've had a few Joe Rocket jackets, riding jackets, um, over my course of, of riding, um, and uh, to me, they make pretty good products. So uh, this glove here is a branded glove. It's it's Joe Rocket. Um, who makes it? I'll just show you the, the label here, just so that everyone can see. Joe, just Joe Rocket, you can see that. Okay. However, um, you can also see that it's branded with Honda Goldwing. So, uh, obviously, this is a glove that I use when I ride my Honda Goldwing. Um, and it's a light glove, right? This is really for like summertime use. Um, there's really no protection at all on this glove. So, this is really possibly just blocking wind. Um, you know, besides that, there is no hand protection. There's no impact protection, whether on the knuckles, um, right, on the knuckles, on, on the top of my fingers, and if we turn it over, right, there's really no protection. This is not leather. This is probably fake suede in a sense, right? So, um, this glove's great be, when you're riding in hot weather and you want your hands to kind of be cooler, things like that, okay? So I really only use this glove um, in certain instances in the summertime when the weather's really hot. Let's say, you know, 85, you know, 85 degrees Fahrenheit and, and hotter, okay? So uh, that's my first glove to show everyone there that I used. Uh, my second glove is from Klein. You can see it here. I believe this is the Baja 4. Let's see if we can zoom in on that label. Yep, the Baja S4 glove. This uh, I just received recently, um, and in all transparency, I really just jumped on the Klein bandwagon um, probably within the last year. Uh, this is my new go-to glove. I would... Pretty much be wearing this glove on most of my rides throughout most of the year 
except late fall and winter. This might be a little too cool. The things I like about this glove is it's uh, breathable capabilities. So it's a mixture of mesh material, you can see there. Also, it has uh, impact protection. You can see here on the knuckles, right? Impact protection. Um, and also on the palm, impact protection, all right? Uh, when I turn this glove over, it has a leather, uh, the, the, the palm side is all leather, as you can see, and it's also vented. So you can see this ventilation. This is, you know, this is good, obviously, on adventure riding when you're, uh, you know, not riding at high speeds. And, uh, you know, it's a nice glove to wear, all right? One of the good things about this glove as well is that uh, this works well with any type of touchscreen device, whether it's a GPS or a smartphone. All right, the the you can see here the the, the index finger is uh, is made for that, and uh, really just an overall well put together glove. And I really like what Climb does on their gloves. They uh, you know they they put this uh, little hook here, and also they have this uh, you know this little mechanism that uh, the gloves could attach to each other. So. You know so you don't lose the gloves right so you can see here on the other glove it has you know like a male female piece and basically the gloves can get put together all right so again this is the the baja s4 glove uh by climb really good glove and uh just pointing that out next glove is i have from uh, saducci this glove i probably had for a year and a half already another excellent glove in my opinion it has uh, um, leather in it. Now, in this example, I have a liner. Remember before I mentioned that I have these liner gloves here? Well, this is an example that I have the liner in this glove, okay? So, um, you can see that there. So, the glove doesn't come with the liner. The Sadichi glove doesn't come with the liner. However, that's, that's basically how I keep this glove. Now... It has uh, good impact protection for the knuckles. It has some impact protection here on the, uh, the knuckles of the fingers. All right, this is leather glove. So it's, uh, you know, a, abrasion resistance, right, to a point. And if I turn it over, the same thing with the palm of these gloves, right? You can see here, it's made of leather. So they're abrasion resistant. Um, it, this glove also we can use for uh, smart devices, anything with a touch screen, <clears throat> you can see there with the fingers, it allows us to do that. And just an overall decent glove. Um, this is for me a three season glove. I would wear this glove summertime, taking out the liner, uh, springtime, taking out the liner. I would also wear this in the fall, uh, uh, with the liner in and also the winter be honest with you with the liner in with my heated grips on the bikes okay so that's the Sadichi gloves now next on the table is one of my most recent purchases from climb uh, this here is the adventure GTX uh, short glove uh, this glove here is uh, also an excellent glove for off-road adventure riding it's a lightweight glove but it has good impact protection uh, of all my gloves, this has the best impact protection on the knuckles, on the top of the fingers. You can see there, okay? Um, it, this, it's all leather, and it's a better quality leather, leather than my other gloves. Okay, much better quality leather, meaning it's a thicker leather. Um, it has impact protection here on the palm. This glove I can also use on uh, touchscreen devices, so it's really useful. And... Uh, all in all, you know, Klein makes a great product. This is a fantastic glove. Um, again, what I notice, and I'm, I'm fairly new to Klein, right, to Klein products, but what I notice is that, you know, they're big with, um, you know, optimal designs for riders. So, uh, you know, it's a quick and easy Velcro. But also what I like is Klein also has these straps. Now, these are excellent for... Uh, putting on the gloves, right? So in other words, as you slide your hand in, right, this glove, you can take your other hand, put it here, and just pull it up, right? It'll pull up on your hand, 
So you'll notice both the climb gloves have that, that slide loop, right? Again, this is used for when you put it on your hands, you can take your other hand and just slide it on real easy, okay? So with that said, again, this was a quick uh, review, a quick overview of all of the, uh, the gloves that I wear when riding. Um, and so with that said, let's get on and uh, look at some of the other gear that I use. Okay, so we're back here on a workbench and you can see here, I have the three boots that I use when riding my motorcycles. Um, starting from the left, I have the uh, Tormaster Solution waterproof uh, touring boot. In the middle, I have the Bates Tactical waterproof uh, boot there in the middle. And on the right, I have the Climb Gore-Tex GTX Adventure boot. Okay, so these are the three boots that I have, and uh, let's take a look at each one of them, and I'll go over, uh, you know, some of the uh, qualities I like and dislike about each one of these. All right, let's let's uh, take a look. Now let's start in the middle here with these Bates boots. Now these are um, these I've been wearing Bates boots for many years riding. Um, Bates used to make a motorcycle boot. I think, I believe it's called the Adrenaline that they no longer make. If you're not familiar with Bates, they're a company that make boots, uh, tactical boots. Um, so you see a lot of police officers and military personnel wearing Bates boots. Why I like Bates boots is because they're so lightweight. This boot is basically weighs as much as a sneaker or a shoe, okay? The quality is also very good for Bates boots. This is a, uh, a, a tactical boot by Bates. You can see here it's waterproof, okay? So all my boots are waterproof, all right? So just wanted to start, start out saying that. This boot has an aggressive um, sole on the bottom, you can see there. And this is a great boot, not only for riding, but also for walking around. It's very pliable. Okay, it's very pliable and it's uh, very, it, it's, you know, it's, it's uh, lightweight. And even though it's waterproof, it's a good breathable boot in my opinion. Now, the, the toe here, it's not a steel tip. So it's, it's firm, but it's not hard. You can see that, okay? And again, a great boot for walking around. And how this works is with this bait boot here is basically it has a Velcro strap on top and the sides have a zipper, right? So very easily you slide your foot in, you lace up, okay? Once you lace up, you zipper up, you can zipper up and then you Velcro it, all right? And so that's that's the first boot. Again, this is my, uh, I would call this my daily riding boot. Um, I probably use this boot 80% of the time when I'm riding, no matter it's, if it's the BMW or it's the Honda Goldwing, okay? I just use this boot for just general riding. The next boot we're gonna take a look at here is the Tormaster Solution Waterproof Boot, okay? So I'll just show you what the label shows us here, and that's what we're riding with here. Um, so this boot is a great, uh, great boot for uh, long distance touring. It's completely waterproof. Um, it has good impact resistant points. So the ankles, okay, you can see here, there's padding on the ankles, but it's not hard padding. It's not so stiff, all right? But it does provide some protection, which I like. Um, the toes, this, you know, this is, let me hold the camera better, sorry about that. The toes are very hard and it has the, uh, um, it has the, uh, the fabric on top for shifting, okay? You can see that, so it's made specific for motorcycles. It's a boot that I would wear again on long distance uh, touring rides, multi-day trips. Uh, you don't have to worry about the rain. Another good thing is from the shin, right? There's shin protection up top here where my thumb is, where it says Tour Master. Um, so, you know, again, very good boot. If we wanna take a look at what the, the, the sole, what the bottom of this boot looks like, you can see it there. So this boot 
it you know it's really made for riding because um you know that that bottom sole for walking i wouldn't use this boot for for walking this is not a good boot for doing a lot of walking while you're riding you know if you go on a trip and you get off your bike and you want to do some walking around let's say a park or something else this really isn't the boot to use right for that i go back to the bates boot but for this definitely for riding long distances now how this goes on you can see here right there's a velcro right so velcros and then you can see here it we zipper down and uh you can take a look at what the inside of this boot looks like right so there's some some breathability in there um it is a waterproof boot so again that is the uh the the tour master uh solution there you go right there waterproof boot okay so that's the that's the second boot in my uh in my lineup now getting to the third boot in my lineup here we're looking here at the climb gore-tex uh um, adventure boot here okay the gtx adventure boot by climb and uh, let's take a look at one of these again this is another waterproof boot it's made for adventure riding um this is a very expensive boot to you know just to start off with um it costs over 400 us dollars as the filming of this video today however there's a lot of a uh, lot of things to be said about this boot now this boot obviously the purpose that i bought this boot is when i do um more so dirt gravel roads uh you know more adventure type riding uh you know less less uh, tarmac and uh paved roads riding Okay, what I like about this Adventure GTX boot by Climb, there's a few things to point out. One is, um, you know, the quality of this boot is, it's, I mean, you can tell that it's made extremely well. Um, we'll start here at the toes. This is impact, you know, we're talking about impact boots. You know, these Adventure boots are, I, I believe made a lot for when the bikes tip over. A lot of what I'm hearing a lot, and I haven't experienced it, um, knock on wood, but a lot of times adventure riding, you're gonna tip the bike over. And you know, you need to protect not only you know, your upper and lower body, but also your, your feet. This boot has a lot of protection. These toes are, you know, I don't, I gotta look at the quality. They're not steel toes, but you know, my God, they, they are a lot of protection there, okay? There's a, you can see here, each one of these boots has for shifting, right? It has this pad on top. Um, now, this boot has a clamp. So to get your foot in here, you pretty much unclamp that. And they have this system they call a BOA system, which is very interesting, okay? So you see in the back here, they have this dial, right? It says BOA, all right? Now, this dial and it, you know basically how this works is this dial to 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 put your feet in the boot you pull this out like so okay now once it's out what you'll do is you'll unvelcro the top here and you can see there's this uh i'm not sure what this uh this cord is but you know it it might be metal, feels like it's metal, right? But basically, you open this up and you slide your foot in, all right? This is a waterproof boot, and you can see in here, it's it's a Gore-Tex boot, and you can see in there, and really the Gore-Tex starts a little, little further down, that gray area is the Gore-Tex, okay? Um, so, just to point that out. But what happens is once your foot is in this boot, right, you, you put your Velcro back on, you know, you. You, you tighten that strap. But what we now do is we go to this little boa uh, lever here. We push it in and then we turn it to the right. Now watch, watch these strings here on the side as we turn this. What, you know, what happens is you see the strings are pulling in tight. And this is, this is kind of a way that we, uh, you know, we tighten the boots on to get a, a proper fit on, you know, our, on our, on our ankles, on our feet. Okay. So, um, you know, again, from an impact perspective, the shin, there's plenty of shin protection here on top. 
um, ankle, right? You know, there's protection on the side here, impact. This is for your ankles, the protection. And then if we turn this over, look at the bottom or look at the soles of these boots, right? That's some pretty aggressive, uh, you know, uh, boot tread there, right? So, and I guess, you know, it's amazing. Look at it, it's made by Michelin, right? This is the first, you know, sneaker shoe or boot that I've ever had that, um, that I've seen Michelin actually making the rubber treads for this boot, right? So, uh, um, you know, I think that's, that's pretty cool. Um, but again, that is my Climb uh, Gore-Tex, uh, you know, a G, uh, GT, GTX boot. Um, it's an expensive boot, uh, but, uh, you know, well worth it when it comes to, uh, you know, safety when, when riding, uh, doing adventure riding. And so with that said, um, that rounds up the, you know, the, the three boots that I wear. Um, and um, with that said, let's move on to the, the next, uh, next set of gear to talk about. All right, now let's take a look at my uh, motorcycle helmets here. And you can see I have four motorcycle helmets here on my workbench. Um, I'll go through, you know, talk about each one of these helmets and, um, you know, basically give you a little history of them. Uh, it's funny. As motorcycle riders, um, the way I feel is that a helmet is a personal item, kind of like how our smartphones have become an extension of us. I feel that helmets are an extension of a motorcycle rider. And, and with that, you know, we build some type of uh, bond with these motorcycle helmets, um, at least in my case, I have. Uh, there's a lot of memories uh, for, that, that I personally have wearing each of these helmets on different type of rides and trips. And uh, and so uh, what I like to do is, uh, you know, we'll talk about the helmets that I have and, uh, um, you know, I'll give you maybe a little little background of some of the rides I've taken on with, with some of these helmets on. So uh, first to start off with, the 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 first helmet that, um, that I bought when, starting to ride motorcycles and I, and I started riding motorcycles pretty late in life. I think I was 35 years old. Um, and so, um, I started with a, uh, a Yamaha V-Star 1100 classic. Um, and, uh, basically I wore with that bike, um, I wore a, uh, uh a three quarter helmet. You are not seeing that here, but I had that bike for around 10 years. And then in 2015, I bought a, uh, a Victory Cross Country Tour motorcycle. Um, and, and if you look at some of my videos that I have, uh, you'll see me on that bike. So starting on the left-hand side, this helmet from Arai, this is a Defiant helmet. This is the, the, the helmet that I bought when I purchased that Victory motorcycle, okay? Um, I have a lot of memories um, with, you know, wearing this helmet. First of all, Arai makes a great helmet. Um, it's very circular, as you can see, right? It's, uh, so if you have a round head, more rounded than oval shaped head, this helmet is going to be a good choice for you, right? It's excellent quality helmet. Um, and, you know, it's a full face helmet, okay? So uh, it has it has pin lock on it, right? You can see here. Um, it has good ventilation on it, and you know, just overall a great helmet. And I rode a lot of my beginning long distance rides with this helmet. You can see here some of the decals. So you know, you know how some people put stickers on their motorcycles. Well. What I did when I had the Victory motorcycle is I put stickers on my helmet instead of the bike. And so these are just some of the places that I wore this helmet traveling with, okay? I did a lot of riding, you can see here in, in uh, Toleco Plains and Robbinsville, the Sherahola Skyway, if you're familiar with that, in uh, North Carolina or Tennessee, uh, here in the East Coast United States, uh, the Tale of the Dragon, US 129, um, just an overall good helmet, okay? This is the Defiant helmet by uh, Arai. It's Schnell certified, it's DLT certified, um, and this is a, uh, uh, you know, 
an excellent helmet there, okay? Now, one thing I'll say about this helmet is, um, you know, if you look at the insides, it has good padding. I'll show you what the insides look like. Um, now, with, you know, with all my helmets, what I will say is that um, with, with all my helmets, except for the climb, right, I'm using a D-ring setup, okay? So you can see here, it has a D-ring. Um, there's a lot of good videos on why D-ring, you know, from a security perspective, but just wanted to point that out. Also, you'll notice on all of my helmets that I've been using center communication, Bluetooth communication devices on all of them. Um, I know Cardio also makes a great communication device. You know, I just got into the center game a while ago and I stuck with them. For me, you know, they've, they've worked, um, you know, they've worked. I've never had a problem with running center. So you can see in this helmet, I have the uh, center 10C Pro on, okay? So this is not only Bluetooth communication device, but you know, this also has a camera and uh, uh, you know, I can uh, do videos from it as well. So just wanted to point that out, okay? So that's, that's my ride defined helmet. Again, another shot of that. Uh, it's, you know, if you have a, a rounder shape head, right? This helmet is going to be excellent helmet for it. I'm sure the new versions that Arai has, um, you know, are good. You know, one thing I'll point out is from a ventilation standpoint, there's vent holes on top. You can see there. Um, and there's also vent holes in the, in the front by the mask. Okay. So um, that's the first helmet to point out. Now onto my next helmet here, which is gonna be my AGV uh, Sport Modular helmets. So sliding over on the bench here, my next helmet is gonna be this carbon fiber AGV Sport Modular helmet here. And you can see it, it has a nice carbon fiber weave to it, all right? Um, you know, this helmet is, the reason why I went with this helmet the, the, right off the bat is because um, I decided when I got my Honda Goldwing that I was gonna be doing a lot of long distance riding. I was gonna be in the saddle of the motorcycle for probably eight plus hours a day on a ride. And I needed a lightweight helmet. Uh, so my I didn't have any neck problems from wearing these helmets uh, so long, okay? So I bought the AGV Sport Module helmet. It's completely carbon, uh, carbon fiber, and it's very lightweight. This helmet weighs less than uh, less than three pounds. I believe that's what they scoped it out for. Um, and it's an excellent helmet. Okay, this was also my first entry into a modular helmet. So this is a Sport Module helmet, and you can see here it lifts up, right? AGV Sport Module helmet. Um, so, you know, again, it gave me the ability now to, uh, you know, lift this, lift the, the lid face up. If I was, if I had a, you know, if I was drinking, um, coffee or water, right. It'd be a quick way for me to do that. Also, if I was riding with other riders and needed to communicate with them, I can just pop the lid up say what I had to say and then put the lid down. This helmet also has a uh, sun visor. You can see that there. Okay, so put the sun visor, um, they built the sun visor in this helmet. Um, this is an excellent helmet. Let's see, this helmet here, I probably have around 25,000 miles uh, within this helmet. So, you know, in comparison, the uh, my Arai helmet, I probably put on around 25,000, uh, excuse me, 25,000 miles as well. Um, um, now with the AGV, um, I bought this helmet when I bought my, uh, Honda Goldwing, my 2018 Honda Goldwing. And, uh, yeah, so right now is, uh, this is, I'm filming this, I'm video recording this here in May, 2023. So I had this helmet a few years, 25,000 miles on this helmet, or I should say in this helmet. Now, a lot of good memories with this helmet as well. A lot of, uh, with this helmet, I started doing a lot of solo long distance riding. Um, so basically did an iron butt in this helmet, um, you know, coming back, uh, coming back on one trip that I did a solo trip from uh, Long Island, New York, all the way down south um, 
you know, I, I stayed in, uh, in Georgia, um, and on the way back, uh, it was, a, it was a, a heat wave that weekend. I remember it was a Saturday and I started riding in like a hundred, 114 degree weather. Um, this is the helmet I was in, right? Spent the whole week by myself, rented a cabin in Copperhead Lodge in Blairsville, Georgia, um, and really just rode the, rode the hell out of all of those ro roads, Maggie's Valley, Dell's Gap, Toleco Plains, South Georgia, Blood Mountain, did the gauntlet, you know, it's just an amazing trip. So again, bring, you know, bringing some memories in this video to the, where, you know, with this helmet, when I look at this helmet, it brings back all those great memories to me, right? Has good ventilation on top. You can see that it flips for the ventilation and um, really just a awesome helmet, uh, from a sound perspective, you know, it's you know, it's pretty quiet. I mean, for me, you know, I never owned a Shoei Nortec, Nortec helmet, but um, you know, you can see here, you know, there's there's good padding inside and it's definitely pretty, pretty quiet. Everything's moisture, wicking material. You can take this off, throw this in the washing machine dryer. Um, you know, you'll be fine. Okay, so you can see here, it's DOT rated, um, you know, it's, ECE certified to 2025, uh, great helmet, lightweight helmet. Uh, I would definitely recommend anyone uh, who's serious about motorcycle riding and is looking for a good lightweight modular helmet, take a look at these sport modules, okay? So now with that said, uh, ironically what happened was I bought a, uh, I, I bought a, a third helmet, which is basically the same helmet, <laughs> but in a different color. So uh, this is a newer sport modular helmet, right? It's basically the twins, except for the, the coloring, right? This is also carbon fiber, made out of the same material as the other helmet, right? They're both the same helmet, except this helmet, uh, I have white in it, right? That was one of the things that I wanted is to have more colors on my helmet to uh to kind of stand out okay so you can see there uh again same helmet agv sport modular um that is my uh, that you know that was my third helmet that i purchased when i bought the bmw the r1250 gsa okay this helmet is my you know basically my my new go to helmet when riding the bmw gsa uh, this helmet is I'm still using when riding my Goldwing. Um, and one of the reasons for that as well is because uh, I have multiple comm devices, multiple center devices that are, you know, each paired up with the different bikes. And it's just easier for me to just throw a helmet on with the uh, comm devices and jump on uh, the, the proper bike. Okay. So that's where we are with these helmets. Now, let's move these on the side for, for now, and let's talk about the new addition helmet-wise to the stable. And that's this, uh, that's the Climb um, Grios Pro helmet right there, okay? Now this I bought specifically for off-roading. You can see here, it's not a modular helmet like my AGVs. It's not, um, you know, a, a sport helmet like my Arai. This helmet here is strictly for adventure riding. That's what I use it for, okay? And it's an adventure riding helmet, okay? This helmet is also very lightweight. It's also made out of carbon and weighs less than three pounds. So another good thing about this helmet is the the uh, the, face, the face shield here transitions. So in the sunlight, this, this face shield in the sunlight is going to uh, turn and tint, okay? And you can see that here as I'm filming possibly, I don't know if the camera captures it, but um, you know, this will tint out on us, okay? Now with this climb, this uh, this beak here on top comes off easily, okay? There's, uh, you know, these little levers here, you turn, uh, there's a lever on top here, okay? You, 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 you pretty much loosen that up and this, comes right off okay so if you don't want that the top lid you can take that off um, and then this helmet also um, 
has a comm device, but very comfortable. Um, it's a little noisy only because I believe, uh, you know, any adventure helmet is going to be noisier than, let's say, a sport helmet, um, possibly some of the module helmets, because it's just a bigger surface area, okay? Now, the unique thing of that climb does, and by the way, all the helmets that I went through, the Arai, my two AGVs have a D-ring, right? A D-ring um, strap, right? So if we look at it again, has the D-ring, okay? If you look at Climb, what they did was uh, they incorporated, which is pretty cool. I'm not sure from a safety perspective if this is safer than a D-ring, but it's basically like a magnet, right? And what you do is it's very easy for a motorcyclist wearing gloves to put this on. You, all you do is, watch this, all you do is line it up and see that? The magnet, pull, you know, basically locks that in. And then take this off, you just take this red strap and pull it off. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good design. Um, great helmet, very lightweight. This is the climb, you can see here. The, the Climb uh, Cryos Pro, um, you know, excellent helmet. It has this material here uh, called uh, choroid. I believe that's how you spell it. And if you look inside, you can see that, you might see that green material. It's like a honeycomb material. Uh, helps make it lightweight and uh, good, for, you know, impact. It's good for, uh, you know, from an impact perspective. But uh, this is an excellent helmet. It, this is a new helmet to my stable, and uh, this is the helmet that I'm going to be wearing on all my adventure rides. So, um, so just kind of, uh, kind of summing all this up, line, I'll line all these helmets up. But you can see here, those are my uh, four helmets that I wear. Again, I use the center communication devices. I know cardio is great. I know cardio is waterproof. Center is not waterproof. I get it. For me, I've invested in center. I never had a problem with it. Um, and I'm just going to continue with them. But uh, listen, hope, uh, you know, hope uh, I gave a, a pretty good uh, quick review on my, my helmets here. Okay, so now let's take a look at the motorcycle jackets and pants that I wear when riding. Um, and you can see here, uh, for me, what I do in my garage is I basically uh, hang everything up on my wall. It's a good way. First of all, I don't have the closet space to keep all of my motorcycle gear. Um, and I find this is a good way to kind of, uh, you know, put it somewhere, display it, easy for me to get to. So you can see here, uh, I have a few different uh, motorcycle uh, jackets and, and motorcycle pants that I use when I go riding, okay? Um, so first of all, starting here, we take a look at this one right here. This jacket is from Climb. That is the Climb Induction Jacket. It's a mesh jacket. Um, I picked this, you know, this, uh, the, the jacket on the right-hand side, the black jacket we're looking at. I picked that jacket up on Facebook Marketplace from a, someone selling it who lived in Colorado. Um, so I, I purchased that at a great price. Um, wanted to point that out. The next jacket that I purchased was the Climb Carlsbad jacket there with pants, okay? That is a Gore-Tex jacket. Um, that's a jacket that, you know, will be, there's, there's no liner. First of all, both these jackets do not have a liner in them. So um, when I wear these jackets, if it's cold weather, uh, I'm gonna have to put, in, put on a, uh, a, you know, some type of uh, mid layer, okay? Um, the induction jacket is a mesh jacket and it's not waterproof, okay? But it does have impact protection. Not a lot, but it has some impact protection, okay? Uh, but overall, the quality of the Climb induction jacket is very good. Now the Climb Carlsbad jacket there, I also have the, the pants there as well. Um, that is a Gore-Tex uh, jacket and pants. That is waterproof. Uh, again, there's still no liner in that jacket. I will need to wear a mid layer when uh, right when using that in uh, colder weather. But it's an excellent jacket for protection, for both impact protection, um, it it and also from uh, 
uh, some abrasion protection, okay? So just pointing that out. Now, moving over uh, to this jacket here, this was this is the Revit Sand 3 jacket and pants. Now, um, you know, I started off with the Revit first before I bought my climb jackets. This is an excellent jacket and pants. This comes with a liner. It comes with a, a an internal uh, waterproof uh, liner as well, right? Uh, I love this jacket. It has great impact protection on it. It has great abrasion material. Also venting, right? You can see it has some good venting. Love this jacket and pants. Um, the only problem that I personally have is that it's a little tight on me when I wear it. So, you know, either I need to lose weight, which is probably the, be the best thing to do, right? But this jacket fits me a little tight. However, I really love this jacket. Again, I also bought this jacket on Facebook Marketplace. The jacket and pants, I think I paid $500 for the jacket and pants, and it was only worn once or twice. Matter of fact, the tags of the jacket were still on it when I purchased it, okay? So the Revit Sand 3, excellent jacket, really like it. Now, moving on to what I think is gonna be and is turning out to be my go-to jacket and pants is this one right here. This is the Climb Induction Pro. Now you can see here, it's different than the Climb Induction. It has better uh, impact protection around the elbows, around the shoulders. Um, this jacket also does not have a mid layer. Um, so I'll have to do something, you know, um, out of the box for the mid layer, but also an excellent jacket. So you know real quick these are the this is the, the the gear that i'm wearing now my climb induction pro uh jacket pants i think that's my new go-to gonna be for three seasons for me um i'll go to the revit uh this jacket here another excellent jacket probably might wear that in fall you know in the fall months because it has good uh good mid layer in that as well um my Carlsbad jacket, when I do any type of uh, dirt or gravel road riding, right? That, uh, you know, um, multi-day trips. Again, the Gore-Tex makes that waterproof. That's a great choice. And then the climb induction jacket here. This would be a good choice for me for like, I think day trips. Um, you know, I also wear uh, riding jeans. So with, with my, uh, I'll mix up the climb induction with some of my riding jeans, uh, some for day trips. But that's kind of my lineup for, for my jackets, for my riding gear. Um, so we went over helmets and boots and uh, gloves, jackets and pants. Uh, yeah, this is, this is kind of what I wear using, using uh, you know, going riding. Now, you know, I will say this. Um, all of this gear that we've went through today are pretty expensive gear, right? So um, um, I know that what I'm showing you is pretty expensive gear. It's premium quality gear. What I will say is that, uh, you know, you don't have to have premium quality gear to do this type of riding, okay? There's a lot of riding gear that might be just as good quality wise as what I'm showing and what I use for a lot lesser price more affordable to get into. My recommendations is you don't have to buy new. The only thing I would buy new are helmets. All my helmets are brand new. But besides that, riding gear, you know, you can get some good deals on riding gear. And again, for me, you know, the Revit uh, riding suit, uh, the Sand 3, $500 for both. The Climb Induction Jacket, I picked up used as well. Um, I think that was uh, $200. So, you know, you can get good deals on this. It doesn't have to be brand new. Uh, I would just say when it comes to riding, you know, don't skimp out on your helmets. If you're gonna spend money, protect your head, right? That's probably the, 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 the first place to put your money. Um, and, you know, with that said, again, just uh, went through all of my, my riding gear um, and uh, hope, you know, hope uh, it helped explain what I, what I ride with.
Well, once again, you know, thanks for watching this video. Uh, like I mentioned just before, right? Um, you know, all the riding gear that I went through in this video, it's premium quality gear and it's expensive, right? And, and you know, you don't have to have expensive gear, right? Um, you know, you can get pretty good deals on riding gear um, that is, you know, a lot less money than what I showed, okay? As a matter of fact, remember I said before, two of these jackets, the induction, the climb induction and the sand three behind me, I purchased off of Facebook Marketplace. Those were used jackets in very good condition, okay? The Revit Sand 3 jacket with pants, with the liners in them, right? Um, that had tags on it. For that complete set, I paid $500 for, okay? Um, the Climb Induction jacket over here, uh, I bought on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, for that jacket, I paid two hundred dollars for. So you know you don't have to buy uh, when it comes to certain riding gear, new gear. What I will say is that helmets, in my opinion, you should always have a brand new helmet, right? Never buy a used helmet. You don't know the history of that helmet, okay? Um, buy your helmets new. If you're going to invest money in motorcycle riding, invest it in the helmets, right? The most important thing that we can protect is our heads, right? So. Invest money in your helmets, okay? Um, and again, you know, I appreciate you guys watching this video. My boots, my gloves, my jackets, my helmets, comm devices, right? These are things that um, I invested in in my in my riding journeys. Uh, for me, this is my my passion, my hobby. Um, you know, I didn't start with investing a lot of money in my riding gear. I gradually over the years, as I started to enjoy riding more and more, and more importantly, more importantly, when I started doing long distance solo riding, multi-day trips solo, is when I realized that the gear and equipment that we have on us is so important. When you're riding through all types of weather, whether it's rain, cold, snow, right? Um, heat waves, okay? It's important to have the correct riding gear and comfortable gear, right? So, um, you know, with that said, hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, a few of you were asking uh, for me to do a video on the riding gear that I use, and that's what this video, uh, you know, is about, and I made it for all you who asked that question. So, appreciate you guys watching these videos. Hope, again, they are educational. I am no expert by any means, right? I'm not, I'm not a professional motorcycle rider. I do this as a hobby for enjoyment. And if there's anything that I've learned and I can share, then that's what I'm using this channel for, is to just share what I learned in my opinion. So with that said, hope you guys all have a great, excellent day, and I'll catch you on the next video. Talk to you soon.